Thank you so much. God bless you, bless you. Thank you so much. Please, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is an honor to stand before you today. It is a blessing indeed to be here to share the word of God and to share fellowship. It's always an honor and a privilege. Uh, Pastor ID, I thank you and I honor you, sir. Pastor Dr. Shiju, we honor you, we love you for your heart for God's people, for the poor, the needy, the widows that everybody forgets, the children of the slain, the children of deceased, and how you feed them, clothe them, look after them, go to the prisons for them. Uh, it is nothing but awesome. God bless you, sir and ma. We are honored to work with you. Praise the name of the Lord. You can put your hands together. Yes, you can clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Today we want to very quick look at a very quick topic, the redemption of sons. The redemption of sons. And um, we will be looking at it from the law of first mention. So we'll go through a few scriptures. Genesis chapter 48, verse 15 to 16. Please, the choir will need you a little bit on the keyboard. Please, you can just stay. Don't be far. Thank you. You can just stay right there. Genesis 48, verse 15 to 16 is the first time the word redeemed was mentioned in the Bible. So we just want to look at it. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long to this day. And then he says, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into the multitude in the midst of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Please leave it there for a minute. Please read the first phrase of this verse with me. One, to go. The angel which did what? Redeemed me from what? From some evil. A few evils. 95% evil. How many? How many? You can shout it. All evil. Sickness, he was redeemed. Poverty, he was redeemed. Moral decadence, he was redeemed. What about his marriage? Redeemed. What about his children? Redeemed. What about his business? Redeemed. Ministry? Redeemed. Generational redemption followed him. Because an angel, and if you want to know the angel, you look at verse 15. He says, the God of my fathers redeemed me, redeemed me. You see, God has created June. Jesus Christ the Redeemer as the month where all evil everybody say all evil that hitherto has existed in my life and your life will be truncated permanently in the name of Jesus if you believe it say amen <laughs> you know evil can be defined as anything that is not the will of God evil can be defined as any event that is not in alignment with the will of God. And if you want to look at the context of evil that happens in the lives of men, you can look at it under two umbrellas. There's one type of evil that happens to men that was caused by another. And there's a second type of evil that happens to men that was caused by those men. And so if you want to look at evil under these two umbrellas, the first type of evil is the evil that happens to a man, and that man is not even aware of how that evil thing is coming to pass. You see this, for example, in the life of uh, Daniel. You see this also maybe in the life of Josiah. Josiah was a king in the nation of Israel in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 21 to 27. We can't read it all. Josiah was a king in 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 21 to 27. We can't read it all because of our time, so I'll just paraphrase. If you look at that verse 23, it announces that Josiah was a righteous king. He says, then the king commanded all people, saying, keep the Passover to the Lord your God. If you go down in verse 23, it says, but in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was held before the Lord in where? In Jerusalem, a righteous king. If you go to verse 24, moreover, Jos Josiah put away those who consulted mediums and spiritualists, the household of gods and idols, a righteous king. Verse 25, now before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might. Once again, a righteous king. But at the beginning of verse 26, you see a very worrisome word 
the word says nevertheless or not withstanding that word is a problem it means that everything we have told you in the last verses is about to change that is upon all that it has has been done this outcome i'm about to tell you now it doesn't align with what we just read it says nevertheless the lord did not turn from the fierceness of his great wrath with which his anger was aroused against judah and it tells us the reason god was still angry it says it was because of the provocations of josiah no it was because of the provocations of another king called who manasseh that had provo provoked god so josiah was here serving god arranging israel according to the dictates of god looking for the scrolls of god so that they could align but another king had done something that god was upset about and so because of that one josiah suffered in fact a few verses later the king of egypt came to fight israel and josiah died so the first kind of evil is kind of evil that happens to a person that is because of what another person did in which this person is not related affiliated in any way with that one we see it also with daniel daniel was in captivity in babylon and Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 25 and said that Israel would be in captivity for 70 years. Daniel was in that captivity, but he didn't, he didn't do anything to deserve it. The second kind of evil is like when a person does something and that seed grows up and then he eats the fruit of that thing. So someone actually does that evil. So these are the two broad strokes of, of evil. The scenario that we see in Genesis 48 is that whether it is under the first umbrella or it is under the second umbrella, the Redeemer, God, the Father of God, the Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, redeems you and I from all types of evil in this month of June and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. How? So how does he begin to do this? You see, because God in his wisdom understands redemption more than everybody else. You see, redemption is not about brute force. Redemption is not about power and might. Redemption is about an understanding of the law. Redemption, in fact, is a legal word. If the lawyers understand it better, you know, that if somebody was lawfully put in a position and that position he is put in is right to be in that position, the only way you can, you know, you have to understand the law that put that person in that position first before you can even begin the process of redemption. That is why in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 11, Proverbs 23, verse 11, the Bible says, Thy Redeemer is mighty. He will plead their cause against you. That means that the one who has come to redeem you and I today, that person understands the law. You know, the realm of the spirit is very law-bound. Law, law in fact, the greatest law in the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit only operates by laws and the laws in the realm of the spirit are nothing but the words that proceed out of the mouth of the almighty god whatever comes out of the almighty god is considered law and tenable in any courtroom in the realm of the spirit what that means is if god says something anybody can quote it and use it effectively because it is law in the realm of the spirit even god will not go against what he himself has quoted that is why in genesis 1 26 to 28 after god created the heavens and the earth and he gave the heavens and the earth to men and said let them have dominion over the cattle the fish the da, 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 da. he effectively by that word them locked himself out of the earth because he gave the dominion to somebody else even he would not be able to redeem man. He wanted to save man when he saw the sin in the garden. He wanted to save man. He wanted to save man. So he sent Abraham. But Abraham had some weaknesses. He would lie about his wife. So he sent Moses. But Moses had some weaknesses. Speak to the rock. He didn't agree. He struck the rock. So God said, come. So he raised uh, Deborah and he raised Samuel. And then he also raised David. But David had his weaknesses. Solomon had his weaknesses. So he began to raise prophets. He raised Jeremiah. He raised Isaiah. And they did great, but they also had their weaknesses. So he says, how am I going to redeem man? And he said, and he announced, who will go for us? Then the arm of the Lord rose to deliver his counsel upon the earth. And a seed was put in a woman's womb. The seed of God himself. And so the love of God for us is intense. Such that 
in the purpose of redemption, he entered the woman's womb so that he would now become a man. And by becoming a man, he will fulfill his own conduct or counsel of only men orchestrating events on the earth. And that's the Jesus part of the, of the, of, of the month team. The Jesus part is that he was a man. He was born as a man. He came into the world as a man. And so this coming into the world as a man is very important. Because right from Genesis, God left himself a fail-safe mechanism just in case something goes wrong. And that mechanism was that he prevented when Eve became pregnant, he prevented the blood of Eve from mingling with the blood of her son. And so it was orchestrated like that for all dispensations and generations. That every man that is born, his blood does not mingle in the mother's womb with the mother's blood. So that when Mary now was pregnant, it was possible for God to take the life of God. I mean the Zoe life of God. I mean everything in the life of God. I mean the way God operates. The, 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 the character of God. The nature of God. The power of God. The might of God. The wisdom of God. The counsel of God. The light of God. The atmosphere of God to take all of that and compact it into the blood of a baby and so when that baby was born the blood that flowed through the veins of that baby were the very life of God now so that baby begins to walk around that is why for example Jesus had to understand the law. If you look at Ruth, for example, when Boaz, you know, in the story of Ruth, Elimelech and Naomi, and then Ruth married one of the sons, and then all, of, all three men died. And then you know the story. Naomi goes back with Ruth to her father's, to her city, to her country. And when she gets there, Ruth finds Boaz. And when she finds Boaz, she pleases Boaz so much that you see in Ruth chapter 3, verses 10, 11, you see that she asks Boaz to spread his skirt over her, in simple words, to marry her or to redeem her. And you see Boaz in verse 12, you can see that Boaz wanted to marry her. Boaz really wanted to redeem. You know, he was the kinsman redeemer. Look at his phrase. He says, and now it is true that I am a close relative of yours, Ruth. However, there is a relative closer than I, there is a kinsman nearer than I. So stay this night and in the morning we shall see what he would do. So the next morning he went to the gate and called this relative because redemption is not possible without a good understanding of the law. As much as Boaz wanted to redeem Ruth, he could not do it because there was a law in the land that prevented him from doing so. Redemption is a legal process. You must understand the law to be able to effect redemption. That is why when the baby was born and began to walk about Jerusalem, Caesarea, Capernaum, you know, Bethlehem and stroll around Judah, Every man that the baby Jesus met as he was grown, everybody that Jesus met as he walked around, he mediated for them by understanding of the laws of the spirit what needed to be done to release their miracle in their time. If a man was blind, he knew what to do. If a man was deaf, he knew what to do. If the water, the storm, he knew what to do. By understanding of the laws of the realm of the spirit, he could bring whatever needed to be done into our realm, into our realm. Because he understood the law. Redemption is not possible without a sound understanding of the rules and laws of engagement. And so when we see Jesus, for example, walking, Jesus met four different blind men. Four different blind men on the earth. Four, many, but this one I just want to point out four. For each of the four of them, what he did with them to receive their sight was different. Look at the first one. In Luke chapter 18, because of our time, we'll just rush through. In Luke chapter 18, verse 35 to 42, to verse 35, and then you go to 42 to 43. It happens that he was coming near Jericho. A blind man began to scream. In verse 42, re Jesus answered the blind man, receive your sight and your faith has made you well. Immediately, the man began to see. But if you go to Mark 8, 22 to 25, Mark 8, 22 to 25, he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Ask me why. Why? He understood by discernment what spiritual laws needed to be effected to make this man see. And so he took him out of the town and then he spat on the ground and put the man. And then the man says, I see men as trees. He spat again, put it, and the man saw clearly. 
Look at John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Another blind man. He passed by, John chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Of course, I can't read it all. He passed and saw a man who was blind from birth. This was the disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents? Jesus said, neither. But that the glory of God might be what? Revealed. And verse 6, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground, made clay with saliva, and anointed the man's eyes with the clay and, the, and said to the man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Why? Yet there's a fourth blind man, and this one was brought him who was demon-possessed. This one was blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spake and saw. You have to understand, according to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, that each one of you sitting there, it consists of three parts. You, have a, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you dwell in a physical body. You are not one, you are three. Spirit, soul, and body. And when something is wrong with you, it can be as a result of a defect in your spirit or a defect in your soul or a defect in your body. You can see three different blind men, sorry, mad men. All of them three, mad. One may be mad because of a spiritual injunction. One and the other may be mad because of a physical issue. Okay? Another one, maybe he smoked something. Another one may be mad because of an emotional defect. If you look, for example, there were certain people that when Jesus went to heal, beyond the healing, he did something that was additional. There was a leper, a, a leper that Jesus went to heal in Matthew 8, verse 2 and 3. When the leper asked Jesus to heal him, Matthew 8, 2 and 3, Jesus not only healed the leper, the Bible says in verse 3, and then Jesus, Matthew 8, verse 3, and then Jesus put out his hand and touched him. What's the need for the touch? Why is the touch necessary? Just heal my leprosy. No, but this leper, Jesus looked into his soul and saw deep low self-esteem and rejection. Everywhere this man went, he has been rejected and rejected and rejected. He, have, he has applied for 15 jobs, printed out CVs, put it all over the place. He, job, he got a job, they sacked him after three months. After two years of waiting, he got another job. They stopped paying salaries after one. He has suffered rejection and he's in the city of David today. And the Redeemer has come to touch you, to ensure that that pain, that emotional defect, in your body that has caused you pain and anguish is healed today in the name of Jesus. Your Redeemer is here. The redemption of sons. That God wants to stabilize you emotionally. To stabilize your emotions. So that the emotions of God in heaven will find expression in you. So that you will be able to cooperate with God and do what God wants to be done. So when God is happy, you can be happy. When God is sad and wants an intercessor, you can also reflect that sorrow in intercession and prayer. So that your life will match and mirror the one of your father in heaven. He wants to raise sons. The interesting thing about the Redeemer is that Jesus showed us something very interesting about spiritual law in John chapter 11 verse 20 to 26 Jesus who has understanding of what needs to be done in the realm of spirit revealed when Lazarus was born a slightly different perspective he says now Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming John 11 20 she went out and met him now Martha said to him Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died but you see, Jesus has now come, the one who understands everything and how the realm of the spirit works. And as she says this to Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, yes, I know he will rise at the res resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the law. No, it's not that I know the law. I am the law. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The Word was with God. There was nothing made that was made without Him. For all things were made by Him. In Him was the light, and the light was the life of men. Verse 14, the Word manifested physically amongst us and dwelt. Jesus says, I am the law. That is why there is no situation I cannot redeem. Because I don't need to appear any, before any court to make a case for your redemption. I redeem you today in my name, Jesus Christ. I am the, the spiritual law. And this is where we begin to access the 
place. Because, because now we know by Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, we know that we are redeemed through the blood. Because it's in him we have redemption through the blood. In him. That is in Jesus. So you wonder, when Jesus was on the earth and Jesus was healing the blind, his blood had not been shed. So how was Jesus able to redeem all those people when the blood by which we are redeemed was not even shed yet? The reason is because he, was, he is alive. He is alive in Caesarea. He is alive in Capernaum. There's no blood needed because he's alive. He's there. The word, the law is there. And so as he's healing and delivering all those people, it is when he's about to leave that now he needs to release to us the token of the redemption, the continuation of the life that he lived. You see, when the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood, it means that the full expression of God's mandate and nature is contained in the blood of Jesus that we plead. And so when we plead that Jesus is a continuation of the mediation that Jesus was doing upon the earth, that when the blood is pleaded in your sickness, that sickness releases really spiritual authority to break it. When when the blood is plead in your business, that business receives spiritual mandate to prosper. When the blood is plead in your marriage, that marriage, though dead, will come alive. When the blood is plead anywhere, the situation turns around because the mediator has come. The redemption of sons. As we begin this journey of redemption, we begin to realize that we are not just in Christ, but Christ is in us. As you sit there, for example, you are carrying the mediator of the new covenant. You are carrying him. Everything that you see and touch is like he can touch them through you. But there is an expression that is very important that is not just about Christ that is in you, or you and, and you that is in Christ. There are two mutually exclusive things. It's like a mystery. That though I receive Jesus at the place of salvation, and he is now in my heart, there is a second process that must happen, which is that the fullness of Christ must manifest in my life. You see it in Galatians 4.19 or Ephesians 4.13. Anyone? That the fullness of Christ... Galatians 4.19, it says, My children on whom I travail birth, until Christ be formed. That after salvation, that's the first work. The second, you can go to the other one, Ephesians 4.13. That after the salvation, there is a need for Christ to be formed. The formation of Christ, it says, till we all come to the news of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of, Christ, of the fullness of Christ. What this means is that if you look at your priesthood, you are saved and redeemed for a purpose. That purpose, yes, we know the first one, which is to redeem territory that we lost for the kingdom. A family system, a grouping, a house, a sector, politics, economy, business, Lagos, Lekki. To redeem territory, yes, that's one form of our priesthood. But there's a second form of our priesthood that has to do with us becoming like Christ. To attaining to the fullness of the stature of the person of Christ. That the growth of that process mandates that as sons, we are able to expand our spiritual nature. To contain what heaven has for you. See, one of the mysteries of the body of Christ is that we really don't know who is depositing the realm in the spirit. What is required for the miracles to happen. Look at the ministration of the voices in Zion today. Was that awesome? Was that wonderful? Put your hands together for the voices in Zion and the apostles. That was wonderful. Now, the mystery of that, that, that is that we don't really know who paid the price for that glory to be shown. We, we don't, that's the mystery of the body. You don't really know. You may be in business and you may have a pastor and that pastor is your pastor. But in the context of the kingdom, the work that that pastor has to do, a fast of one day in one week is sufficient. But you in business, the context of what you have to do in the kingdom, you must do three days food fast, seven days fast without food. It doesn't matter. It is the context of your representation in the spirit that is going to determine what you output for the kingdom. That's the mystery of the body. That you don't even know who you are. Ephesians says that we must begin to have a revelation and understanding in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge. That means that until I begin to take time to pray and discipline myself to wait upon the Lord, I do not have the, the necessary knowledge 
I don't even know who I am. Talk to us about the knowledge to run my family, run my business, run my operations. It is this knowledge that sets you apart. Such that the things that you touch now become different. You see, God may determine, for example, that he will commit to you extremely huge amounts of kingdom wealth. And so when it comes to his dealings with you, you are wondering, is it only me? Why? Because small money enters your hand. He says, give it. Another small money enters your hand. He says, give it. Another small money enters your hand. Then big money enters your hand. He says, give it all. You're like, is it only me? Can't God tell somebody? No. You cannot deal with the spirit of mammon just by prayer and fasting. You must deal with the spirit of mammon by obedience in giving. Give, 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 give. No, it's because there is something coming. And the mandate of God over your life determines that you will be trained in this school so that you will not be taken over at that point when these things begin to happen. God may determine that you should wait upon him specific times of the night, specific periods, specific times. Don't ignore those promptings. There is a glory coming. You are being redeemed as a son so that you will take kingdom and territory for God. All these things we see here is little. When God commits kingdom inheritance to a man, his generation never remains the same. And so we must fulfill our mandate in our portion as sons. We must be raised as sons. And one of the manifestations when God wants to raise sons is holiness. You know, I used to read in the Old Testament various places in the scriptures where the Bible will talk about, you know, that the Ark of the Covenant was holy and then that this was holy and then that was holy. It talks about the showbread being holy. It talks about the crown that was put on the head being, even the effort that Aaron wore was holy. And then the Holy Spirit said to me one day, if the totality of holiness is obedience to God, when did the Ark obey me to earn the title holy? When did the showbread or the effort obey me to earn the title holy? And I said to him, they didn't. So he says, so what is holiness? So I don't know. So he says that holiness is like a perfume that God wears. And whatever God touches becomes holy. So obey, obedience to God is not what makes you holy. Holiness is what makes you obey. And you spend time with God in worship like we did today. And after the meeting. And as you are worshiping, this perfume is rubbing off on you. When you spend time in prayer before God with your hands raised, as you are spending time, a son is raised, God commits to you kingdom inheritance. The perfume is rubbed off on you. The fragrance we sang about is coming on you. And then as you step out of your house, you see what you could not do before and you find strength. You can do it now. You see what you could do and the things that you could, you could don't even recognize who you are. In your estate, they say he has changed. It's because he has encountered. Somebody has touched him. Deep within, he's changed him completely. But perfume, after two or three days, begins to win, isn't it? So it must be a continuous uh, touch. Our Christianity is a contact spot. You must go and touch. And when you touch, the touch, every touch, touch has quality. The quality of a touch is dependent on the sincerity of the toucher. That when I'm sincere in my heart and I come sincerely, ah, then he would touch. You cannot pretend before God. God cannot bless who I pretend to be. It is when I'm sincere, then he touches. And when he touches, then I change. Then I am revealed to the world as a son. Because the fullness of Christ is forming in me. I remember when we started our company a few years ago, 13 years ago. We were instructed that we should never pray a bribe. And we suffered for it. We went into different places, different organizations. And some will say to us, you know, point blank, you must put the money in. If not, and we will beg them. I remember once, my head of sales, he was a Muslim, came to me and said to me that, there's a certain director that says that we should put 13 million naira. And I said, but what did you tell me? No, we don't do that. So he says, yes, that, you know, I told him we don't do it, but I said, let me still come and find out. I said, well, we don't do it. This company was so upset. What kind of rubbish company is this? They struck our name out, canceled the order they were to give us, called another company who didn't even have the skills to do it and awarded them the contract. We were sitting there. In fact, it was so bad that after they awarded them the contract, they didn't even have any skill to deploy the solution. So guess what they did? They called one of my staff, offered him a mouth-watering and employed him. It pained me. And that's the end of the testimony. <laughs> There's no aftermath. 
see what Jesus then did. No, nothing. That's the end. They spent the money. Case closed. They hired my staff. You are being manifested as sons. 13 years later, not one bribe have we paid. But we are growing. And God has showed us that inside this, your Nigeria, there are noble men and women that will not stretch forth their hand unto ungodliness. Do you know why? Because every bribery corruption, every bribery contract, right? The Bible says in Proverbs that fire consumed the tabernacles of what? Bribery. Bribe money doesn't prosper people. It is God that prospers people. It's consumed by fire. It is labeled to be consumed by sickness or, you know, that's how it happens then. God is raising us as sons so that we will take territory for him and stand. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. You know what? The light afflictions that you suffer, light, will work for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Are you with me? Oh, I remember another company. They called us and said that the senior something, something, you know, at the board wants to meet with you. And as soon as they said, I knew what the meeting was going to be about. So I said, even I want to meet with him too. But I was quaking in my, <laughs> I was shaking. I said, dear Holy Spirit, what am I going to tell this man? He says, go, I'll be with you. So I was praying, praying all the way to his office door. I stopped praying as soon as I opened the office door. I said, oh, good afternoon, sir. Because I was afraid. The man said, oh, good afternoon. We sat down. I saw a picture of his daughter. He said, oh, sir, how is your daughter? You know, he says, oh, wonderful. She's doing great, you know. We talked about his daughter, talked about his second daughter, talked about his wife, talked about their school, talked about where they school. We had a talk. And when we were wrapping up the conversation, I was like, when is this man going to ask? God had zipped his mouth. He told me, okay, that's it. You can be going. I said, really? He says, yes. So he escorted me out his office to the door, to the reception, to the corridor, to the lift, went down the lift with me, took me outside the building and said, thank you so much for coming. And I left. It is nothing with God to deliver with a few or with many. If God is God, as he redeems you as his son, stand your ground. He will manifest his glory in your life in Jesus' name. Please stand to your feet. This is a song that we will use quickly to pray. I want you to be strong. God did not bring you here to make you afraid. No. I want you to be strong. When I came in and the choir did that thing that they did with their hands raised, it was a confirmation. Because yesterday, as I was preparing for this meeting, the Lord said that at the point in the meeting, we should raise our hands like this. Not now, not now, not now. And how many of you saw the choir ask us to do it? Uh -huh. You saw it, right? So that's a confirmation. The choir said that when a father wants to embrace a son, this is what the son. Now, I will add two more to it. This sign is a sign of a funnel. That everything that heaven has for you today, <laughs> you will receive it in Jesus' name. Nothing will be wasted everything that God in heaven has for you lands, continents, countries, ideas, businesses, books, wisdoms, messages, funds, allowances, relationships, marriages, children, everything that God has for you to redeem you as a son, you will receive it today in Jesus. The second meaning of this one is victory. That the place that you went the Egyptians you saw before today, you shall search for them and you shall see them no more in the name of Jesus. But there is a song we will sing and then we will pray that prayer and then we are done. But just before we do that, anybody here, you want to settle the score with Jesus. Raise your hand. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's, your, let's see your hands. The Bible says that we are all creatures Eh? We are all created by God, but not all creatures are children. There's something called family business. In family business, you are a child of God. I have my children, and my neighbor has her children. You know, if one of them walks into the house at the end of school and says, Uncle, allow me in, even though I love the children, they are not my children, so I can only keep them for a little while, then I have to send them back to my neighbor. There's something called family business. You don't belong in God's family. You have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you want to make it right now. Just raise your hand quickly. Let's pray. Raise your hand quickly. Let's pray. You have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you want him to come into your heart. You want him to make you your Lord. Is there anybody? Please raise it high so the ushers can see you. God bless you. I want to just pray very quickly with you. If there's anybody, please raise your hand. Let's see you so that we can pray. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ushers, is there anybody? Can we go on? One person. Okay, please, wherever you are, wherever you are, please come forward. Come forward very quickly, very quickly. Our time is finished. Anybody else, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord? This is the time, this is the hour to make that change. Please come, come quickly, come quickly. Come quickly so that we pray together. Jesus will come into your heart, fill you up with his love and his light. You will feel the embrace of God today. Anybody else, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Please raise your hand high so we can see you. Don't be ashamed. We all did it one day. Eh? And God has blessed us immensely. Oh, God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, mommy. God bless you. Anybody else? We're about to pray. Anybody else? Please stretch, your, stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand to them. Please repeat after me. Put your right hand on your chest. Everybody. Right hand on your chest. Yes, right hand. Thank you. That means you are praying from your heart. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, today... I come before you and I ask you to come into my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. Please wash me, cleanse me, remove my sin today. Call me your son. Call me your child. Call me your daughter. Receive me to your kingdom as one of your children. Let my life change forever and ever in jesus mighty name amen praise the lord just stay there stay there pray with us and then after we are done you will go everybody please stand there is a song we will sing and it is a song of our ordination this is just a song of our ordination as god commissions us as sons it's a simple song it says i choose the way of the lord 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 for the of men. You inherited that life when he sacrificed it for you on the cross of Calvary. With it you have inherited his legacy, his success, his genius, his grace, his mind, his truth, his victory, his wisdom, his wealth, his prowess, his power, his anointing, his sight, his vision, his strategy, his outcome, his capacity, his vivacity. 
and his Holy Spirit, the how of God. Coursing through your veins and within your tongue is this holy combination. The endless life of Christ and the Holy Spirit of the living God, the how of God, the maker and sustainer of worlds. Because of this, you cannot die. You cannot fail. You cannot falter. By this power at work within you, you subdue mountains. You walk through valleys. You dine in the midst of your enemies, unharmed, unfaltered. You carry God's anointing overflowing. You wield power over both life and death. You have the life of Christ in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the way, for the way of the Lord is the Let's package our offering. It can, can make a difference. Touching tomorrow and all the other offerings and tight. Almighty Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be alive. It's a miracle and we don't take it for granted. Father, I accept our thanks in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the grace to give. We know some have, they cannot give for some reason. Some don't even have, but they have the willingness to give. Father, we pray for those that are lacking in our midst, that your word in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, will avail for them that you provide for their needs according to your glory, to your, to your riches so glorious in Christ Jesus. And that for those who have this capacity, but for some reason they are holding back, so that we pray that they will understand that those that scatter, we actually gather. And the more you hold on to anything, the more you need. So therefore, we thank you, Almighty Father, for the opportunity to give you because we have, out of the little that you've given us, out of the much that you have given us, we are giving back just a little. We pray that whatever is left in our hands, Father, you bless it in Jesus' mighty name. That these offerings and tithes and all the offerings will be used for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Choir.
Hallelujah. Please be seated for COD News. Thank you. It's not complete for you to just get deliverance. If you are in Christ, you are entitled to the blessing. When God does something awesome, you need to mark it. And then on Wednesday, the handmaidings of the Lord served another delightful platter of the word as Pastor Shiju spoke about treasures, what treasure is and the right way to treat everything we hold accountable. She further spoke about how our treasure defines us, how it allows us to survive, have dreams and goals. Here's a highlight of the service. Know something today, my brethren, your treasure develops with you. If your treasure is not developing with you, that person is not a treasure. If I'm going up, Antinoti is not going up. Antinoti is going up, I'm not going up with her. Then I'm not a treasure. I don't matter to her. If I matter to her as she's going, she's carrying me along. Your treasure must develop with you. So if you have friends who are suppressing you, smell the coffee, they don't like you. Don't ever be on the wrong side of God on the wrong side of our faith on the wrong side of doctrine your location is everything being a treasure in hidden vessel to be used by your maker don't ever be on the wrong side of the road for where your treasure is there your heart will be Wow! Wow! Have you heard? Have you heard the big news? It's Dr. Shiju again! That's right! And the big news is the Arise Community Insurance Scheme, a vision of Arise Foundation. And now everyone is dancing. The market woman, the woman on the street, the village folks, the janitor, and the homemaker. There is ecstasy because the change agent, Dr. Shiju Iliomade, has raised the bar again. She gave them primary health care, modern hospitals, access to clean water, modern schools for education and skills development and empowerment academy to put them to work and now their compassion hero wants to touch their life in a different way even when they may not be around with 15,000 naira per year you can give cover for life or permanent disability for one person and you can give cover to as many lives as you can arise community insurance scheme the gift of their life you can support the arise community insurance scheme by making a minimum payment of 15,000 naira per person. You can send it to the account details currently showing on your screens. Or you may also support a whole community by giving most generously. You can join Carpe Diem early on Wednesday morning as they will be worshipping and praying to the God Almighty live in the sanctuary and online from 6.30 a.m. While on Friday, it will be a time for pure praise and worship at our His Lord's Praise Our Service holding in the sanctuary from noon. <laughs> The men's department of the City of David will be having a program titled Building Altars with Pastor Ayo Olokun. He is a medical doctor by training with a master's degree in business administration. He's also a business executive and has authored two books. He is married to his jewel of inestimable value, Lillian, and they are blessed with children. This program will be holding on Zoom on Monday the 13th from 7 p.m. Please visit the link on the screen to register as it promises to be a very enlightening session. Connect Now will be having a session this evening.
with Pastor Tosin David on personal financial planning and management, building a secure financial future. If you know you're single and ready to get married, you can attend this session by visiting the link on your screens. This program will be holding from 7 p.m. this evening. The login details for both sessions are all available right now on all our social media platforms. The walls of the prison may be too high, but our hearts penetrates them to touch the inmates behind to help turn them to better citizens. So, we support their education from O-level GC exams to tertiary institutions. I'm studying peace studies and conflict resolution. I want to become a peacemaker in the society. We renovated the National Open University of Nigeria Department located in the prison, built an ICT center in addition to a library and a chapel. We renovated the deteriorating hospital donated a generator and ambulance for emergencies and lit the adjoining streets with 48 solar powered lights and every sunday we send them 5000 packs of food while our legal aid team as its inmates awaiting trial but can't afford a lawyer in all we have impacted 228847 inmates but there is still a lot to be done and we want to do more but now we need your support to keep going yes we need partners can you join us if you can commit to give 1000 naira every month or 12000 naira for one year you are a partner and guess what if you commit 12000 naira at once you'll get 1 million naira personal accident insurance and that covers both road and domestic accidents plus 100,000 naira reimbursement for medical expenses courtesy our insurance partners. For details, visit our website. His Love Foundation Love in Action Thank you.